then behaves as if it had seen too many bad movies, when everything fits too well. The beginning, the middle, and the end, from fade in to fade out. It was the hottest Sunday in my recollection. A silver sun burned through the sky like a huge magnifying glass. I've been a writer for longer than I like to remember. I was alone. It got to be 11. And I was holed up at my hotel doing some last minute rewriting. I was feeling a little sick at my stomach. What with that white pipe been reading? I was sane on one subject, her. And I had just begun to write a story when I remember everything. The golden girl, the cover girl, the girl next door, the girl on the moon. She showed no pain. No nerves, not a tear. No pleasure, no interest, no nothing. Through me, she met everyone, the famous and the infamous, her youth, and beauty captivated them all. There she was, the world's number one symbol of desirability. And from that moment on, I did not use my head very much, except to be thinking of her. What's the matter with me? That night, I had a mixed up dream. I remember it was late one afternoon. I can still remember the smell of honeysuckle all along that street. I put on dark glasses so people couldn't see my eyes. And I took them off again so they wouldn't get to wondering why I wore them. How did I know she'd ever show up? I didn't. Makes me laugh now to think back. All I ever had to go on was a place and time to see her again. All I had to do was wait. I'll never forget the way we met. She looked at me for no longer than the beat of a heart. I had to speak to her again. I had to see her. Without that silly staircase between us. Some people can smell danger. Now ask me, it's crazy how you can get yourself in a mess sometimes. At first, I thought I was just dreaming it. I've been hearing her voice in my sleep for nights anyway. A black pool opened up at my feet. I dived in. It had no bottom. A couple of nights later, I went to the house. It was dark when I was getting there. I was being that careful. It was quite a night. It turned out to be quite a party. And then I saw her. She moved among all these crazy people as if she were loaded with Novocaine. That's how I happened to meet that woman. The whole place seemed to have been stricken with a kind of creeping paralysis, out of beat with the rest of the world, crumbling apart in slow motion. But once I'd seen her, I was not in my right mind for quite some time. And every night I went to meet her again. I walked for a long time. It was the walk of a dead man. I was walking into something, and I didn't like the feeling I had about her. Walk! There it was again. That room of hers, all satin and ruffles. This wasn't the end between her and me. That was the beginning. <laughs> We're right back where we started. I caught the blackjack right behind my ear. I felt pretty good, like an amputated leg. However, by then, I'd started concocting a little plot of my own. But a lot of details had to be worked out. I was horrified by the enormity of my plan. She didn't know then what was happening to her. She was cool. Like somebody making funeral arrangements for a murder. Not yet committed. Maybe she was all right. And maybe Christmas comes in July. That's when she decided to run away. I knew it had to be done. I knew it was up to me. I knew it would haunt her. Tonight. I started crying softly like the rain on the window. This is it now. The payoff. 
nothing will stop him. I will yell, I will yell. I couldn't get it out of my head, what she said about nobody being in the house but us. The dream she had clung to so desperately had enfolded her. I am tired. In reality, Perception, doubt. You can't know the reality of what happened. There is no what happened. I go way back. Back to when the movies had two dimensions and one dimension, and sometimes no dimension at all. Looking at something changes it. Sometimes the more you look, the less you really know.